people expect free as an option. It's a peace of mind. It's a comfort. It's, it's an expectation. It's a checkbox. But they want to see that expedited is an option. So what that means is as you're planning with your carrier, you plan your volume to be potentially going on the lowest cost method, but you have to have the option of giving your consumer the option to expedite that order if they choose. Like we started selling this product out of the trunk of our car. Don't be afraid to fail. Inventory management is about balance. Get the product out, that's number one. I've always preached sustainable growth. So we just started building community. Look at the data. Product development is everything. Yeah, we say we're a brick, click and pop. But you have to love what you do. I see us. Awesome. It's working this time. So hi, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of our seven-week Black Friday Cyber Monday speaker series. So we're going to be doing these every Friday up until November 20th. Uh, and I'm really excited to introduce today's speaker. Uh, so I want to welcome Krish Iyer from Ship Station. Krish is located in New York right now. And I'm really excited about having Krish on this week because as of this Wednesday, we officially became partners with Ship Station. So we're very excited about that. Um, and um, I'm sure Krish is going to tell us a lot about Ship Station and about shipping around the holidays and in general. Also, of course, my co-host Scott, <laughs> welcome again. Hey, nice to see you. Nice, Ivana, thanks for bringing us all out here. And, you know, we're, we're doing the speaker series for seven weeks leading up to Black Friday, Cyber Monday. Uh, this is our second week in a row here, as Ivana was alluding to. And it's good to see some of you back. Looks like uh, a lot of you from last week are back here again. And of course, we're streaming live in the Facebook group. And I can see there's a handful of people in there commenting and, and viewing as well. So welcome, everybody. We're really excited. We know that shipping is a very, very sexy topic. Just kidding. <laughs> but it's it's a very very important topic, and I know that it's if you're a merchant, you're a store owner, this has something that has caused you some grief at some time, and you are always looking for ways to improve your shipping strategy, improve customer satisfaction, improve profitability. So we are really really glad to have Chris here today, and we're going to dive into a lot of that. If you have any questions at all, just pop them into the chat, as Ivana said. And of course, if you are if you're on Facebook and you don't, if you're too lazy to hop into the Zoom call, you can put your question in there as well. We have eyes and ears everywhere. So uh, let's bring out Krish. Krish, thank you so much for joining us all the way from New York City today. Yeah, my pleasure. It, uh, it's always fun to talk to my friends uh, north of the border. Uh, always a, a pleasure. Um, I, I have a special love for Canada, uh, the Canadian people, and I have family uh, there in Canada. So I have a good incentive to treat you nicely. Well, Chris, do you want to give us a little bit of an intro into you know, what you do at ShipStation and a bit, you know, what is ShipStation? What does it do for merchants? Sure, sure. I'll start that in reverse, uh, which is that ShipStation is the premier platform in marketplace e-commerce. The idea is wherever you sell, however you ship. Uh, the idea that you can create better workflows across carriers and across your selling channels. So bring us your orders that come from Etsy, from Walmart, from Amazon, and from newer channels like Alibaba, which we launched this week, uh, and many, many dozens of others. So I invite you to give us a try, um, a trial. Uh, certainly we have uh, very good offers here um, for free trials, risk-free during the holiday season. So no excuse not to get on. Uh, right away. Um, and a little bit about me. Uh, I'm our head of industry relations and strategic partners, um, which is a fancy way of saying that nobody really understands what I do. Um, but that is that uh, I represent ShipStation um, out uh, to uh, valued partners uh, like you and also um, work with some of our uh, strategic partners out in, out in the marketplace. And so uh, it's a lot of fun. And I think most importantly, uh, getting to help merchants on their journey and get them uh, to, to ship better and increase their sales is something I personally find very rewarding and uh, most of all working uh, also with folks like you. So Chris, you said you just made a joke about Canadians being so nice. Every time I talk to someone from ShipStation, you guys are like the nicest. Mm -hmm. 
Is there like a little well, Canadian department in there that you're running or like what's going on? You, you guys well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have, we have kind of a, uh, you know, user playbook of uh, be like Canadians and that's just one single chapter. So we'll take that. We'll take that. So if nobody's used ShipStation, this is one of the, like, I know uh, maybe Chris has been too humble here, not really boasting about how awesome ShipStation is. This is one of the most like leading apps to, pr to provide tools and support around shipping. Um, in a nutshell, Chris, can you give us a few like use cases of, of how you might improve a merchant's life using ShipStation? I know sure. like la labeling and all these kinds of things and the, the tracking page, I love a lot of these different features, but you want to jump into a few of those? Sure, certainly. Um, I think, uh, you know, as I said, that we are, our mantra is uh, wherever you sell, however you ship. So the idea is, can you bring in orders from across the spectrum of your selling channels? So those are the, the tools that I think are most powerful. Um, we have a lot of merchants that start on one channel and then they, they see a tile for Alibaba, for Google Shopping, for other ones, and they say, what's that all about? And they learn and it becomes a little less intimidating for them. So that'd be tool number one. I think the second tool is the idea that um, we offer best in class shipping rates. If you are in Canada, obviously wonderful Canadian carriers like UPS, FedEx, Canada Post and, and several other ones that we uh, help to make you more efficient. To your question earlier about returns, we have things like branded returns portals where if you're a merchant and you really don't want to deal with a lot of those inbound inquiries about uh, returns that you can direct users to a branded returns experience to do self-service returns. Finally, things like a branded tracking page. We all know that if you can create a quality experience around tracking, um, especially if you're a brand that has some brand loyalty, people go and check that tracking page pretty often. And if they really want something, especially for the holidays, they're going to that page very often. So why not make that a more professional branded experience? So that's a uh, just a couple of the many tools we have on ShipStation that you can take advantage of uh, with a free trial. That was a light bulb moment for me when we, we you know, we met, we, obviously Ivana just announced we became a ShipStation partner this week, which is timely. But when I first was learning about ShipStation, I know that as a merchant, as a store owner, we care so much about every touch point with our customer. And if we're going to be communicating with them a page that they're going to visit so frequently, like the, the tracking page, why do we want to represent ourselves as USPS or FedEx or one of these shippers? We can have our own branded page and we could make it awesome. I thought that that was a really good feature that caters to Shopify stores. Like Shopify stores are all about differentiate, <clears throat> differentiating themselves to their brand and story. So every touch point is something that really matters. And I think you guys have done really good with offering that solution. Thank you. Yeah, we, we, we had actually somebody comment in uh, in the group. This was earlier this week, and she was experiencing some issues with shipping in terms of, you know, the package got never made it to the customer, and the customer messaged her and said, "I never got the package." And of course, she's following up with the carrier. The carrier saying, "Nope, we delivered it. It's out of our hands. We did it." So, you know, when you encounter something like that, it's like, how do you? Is there some way that you know ShipStation would help? maybe bridge that gap a little bit better so that there is a clear record of what's happening? Sure, absolutely. I think the name of the game here is communication. And so, um, you know, one of the things about the example you just gave is that we're talking about a lot of after the fact communication, meaning somebody going in manually and tracking. If you're a retailer, it's critical during the holiday season, and especially during COVID, to communicate things like shipping delays. Um, potential problems that you may have seen to certain delivery locations, communicating that in the order itself. In the checkout, we have tools uh, like right now, like being able to deliver your shipping rates live into the cart. Um, and in addition, then after the fact, we talked about that branded tracking page and even with notifications after the fact, I cannot stress how important important that is to over communicate during the COVID period. So to, to your point, part of it is just good old fashioned communication um, and, and really thinking of our customers the way that we would want to be communicated with. Um, and part of it is then also taking advantage of some of the tools like that branded tracking page and other resources out there 
uh, and then following up, following up, following up with that customer to make sure they've had a good experience. And so then besides delays or, you know, just things that are kind of out of your control, what else, is there anything else that you expect to see this year in particular when it comes to, you know, getting orders out, getting things out in time for Christmas? Um, I'm just curious to hear your, your take on that. Sure, absolutely. Um, I think the first thing, you know, we did a, a survey recently, which will be available on the ShipStation website. Um, so, but I'll, I'll give people a sneak peek on some of the, the data that we collected. Um, and one of the interesting things I found was that um, people started shopping for this holiday season far earlier than we could have ever anticipated. I'll give you a great example. I saw some of our initial raw data a few weeks ago and I was commenting to my wife. I said, uh, I can't believe that about a, about a quarter of the people we, we surveyed um, started their holiday shopping in August. This was in September when I mentioned this to my wife and she said, well, what are you talking about? I've already done all mine. And so um, what that really means is that people are starting that holiday shopping, certainly this year, earlier than ever, but what's the driver behind that? Some of it is the shipping speed that you mentioned and potential delays and being worried about that. Um, as you know, we don't have a whole lot of space in New York, so I'm very worried about shopping too far in advance and things mm -hmm. accumulating in my office. Um, but the second is the idea of inventory, inventory visibility, inventory vi availability. What do I mean by that? Meaning the idea that one of the real reasons that people are shopping so far in advance is because they're afraid of inventory of the items they want or need running out. So they're doing either buy well in advance for the holiday present need or a stockpile when it well in advance. Um, and so those things are really driving a lot of those holiday um, purchases that are happening as soon as August. Um, and, and really, if we're already in October and, and, and retailers haven't really made plans for this holiday season, in some ways, it's too late. But it, you it can always get on ShipStation and then that'll, that, that'll make it easier. We'll, we'll help you out. <laughs> I was going to say, it also kind of sounded like your wife was testing you about the Christmas shopping to see if you had even thought about it. And you failed, didn't even think about it yet. Well, I'm lucky that I, I actually have the same birthday as my wife, so I'm never going to have a problem of uh, forgetting her birthday. Oh, that's at nice. At least one out of two is okay. So, so Chris, it sounds like like a lot of people are being cautious. They're saying like, what if I can't get products shipped in time? I'm going to do all my shopping now. There's kind of like this, like they're doing it themselves. Like they're, that fear is kind of in their mind. They're just shopping themselves. But what are the, the actual data looking like? Like if, sure. I, wait, if I waited until... Uh, November 25th or, 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 or the 27th, 29th, or even in December, like our shipping time still backed up? Yes, absolutely. Um, we're already seeing, so pre-COVID, our expectation of order to delivery, uh, both in, in, in the US and Canada. So our, our North American tendency was to see um, the order to delivery cycle is five days, meaning you order an item, when you expect someone to fulfill it, drop it into the mail stream, and then the final delivery is a full five days. Even with two day, um, two day delivery and that expectation, um, ultimately the, the, the five day total cycle is what was expected. In light of COVID, now that has become eight days. And so what that really means is to your point about what, you know, what kind of holiday deadlines, to some extent, the deadlines don't matter. The expectations and the availability are what really matter and what are driving consumer behaviors and overall inventory um, availability. Um, but, but, but a couple of statistics that, uh, to your point, I think you might find interesting. Um, when we surveyed some users recently, as I mentioned, um, we, we found that nearly 80%, 79% of our respondents have either experienced a delay or a cancellation and now expect a delay due to COVID. So 
Um, in some ways, that's actually a positive for retailers because customers are a little more forgiving than they normally are in some cases. It means we still need to plan well in advance, but as opposed to where is my package, there's a little bit more slack um, between what we previously expected and what we're reasonably expecting now. But something interesting, Scott, is that 13% of the folks that we surveyed said they consider this now to be the new normal, meaning they think it's a permanent change that, okay, increased lead times could be a forever thing. Yeah. Okay, so that's, <laughs> this is news to us. And I was being very selfish by asking you that question because if prior to COVID, like last year, the year before, the year before that, that was like, you know, once Black Friday's done, one of our big pushes was creating some urgency around like the need to ship by date. So it's like last chance to get your product or order your product and have it arrive in time for Christmas Eve. And we could like comfortably promise a date. Um, so what is it? What is a date now that you suggest we comfortably promise as like the, the last shipping deadline? You said eight days. Is it like, or, or do we well, need to do like three weeks out? I, I, I would say the, the best answer to your question is yesterday. Um, and so what I mean by that is um, check with your shipping carrier themselves as to their final drop date. But to be honest, let's, let's not even look at those. Let's, let's count, you know, at least a couple weeks before that, um, just in light of some of the delivery delays and cancellations on orders that we're seeing. Okay, I got a marketing idea that just generated from this conversation. Because that was honestly, in the past, that was a big part of our last push. And, and now we're like being cautious. So we don't want to push it based on what you're saying. So I, I would almost say that like Black Friday is the last day that we could comfortably kind of promise. It's like, yeah, we could 75% comfortably say you're going to get your product by Christmas if you order by Black Friday. But maybe this is my marketing idea. It's like we need something like a token to represent that gift if it doesn't arrive. Yeah, so, like, so, 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 so our company's doing that. Our company's providing like an email, like, hey, you didn't get your gift in time, but here's something really funny to, 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 to keep you entertained in the meantime. Sure. So we're seeing, I, I think, um, maybe a different way to answer this is that um, typically in the past, we all expect, we, we, we crossed a thir certain buyer threshold to expect free shipping. Now when somebody charges us for it, it feels weird. It looks weird. Um, and we typically have not been particularly willing. Maybe we will if you know there's a $50 threshold or a $100 threshold, but by and large, we expect free shipping. And, and largely uh, expedited shipping um, options pre-COVID were rarely ever used. So to your point, Scott, um, about what is it we could do, um, I would say free shipping is an expectation. And, and I, I, you know, about 66% of our users that we surveyed still expect free as, as the normal, but about 47% said that they're willing to pay for premium. So that may sound like it's, it's contradictory, but it's not. So here's, here's the, the, the detail. People expect free as an option. It's a peace of mind. It's a comfort. It's, it's an expectation. It's a checkbox. But they want to see that expedited is an option. So what that means is as you're planning with your carrier, you plan your volume to be potentially going on the lowest cost method, but you have to have the option of giving your consumer the option to expedite that order if they choose. More importantly, to your point of, well, is there some sort of customer delight that we can do in light of potential delays? What if you subsidized or made easy the expedited shipping rate, knowing fully well that you may, you may not make it back? So if free is the, the expectation and, and already that, that's built into your, your cost model, um, could you subsidize the um, expedited shipping? So maybe that's $5, maybe that's a $6 upcharge, whatever that may be, even if you're having to take points and margin away from your sale, 
Uh, to do that, you still may want to offer the, the customer that option because he or she is not only willing to pay for it, but it gives them that peace of mind. And, and a lot of times when we're filling products in an e-commerce environment, we just, we lack that level of discrimination really to know what's important to one person may be more important to somebody else. I'll give you a great example. And that was, uh, I ordered some, uh, a, a gift basket for a colleague of mine who's sick, he has cancer. And um, had picked the day that I was going to order the item um, did that, paid the delivery fee, and um, my, my colleague uh, never got the item, uh, especially not on the intended date. So I waited a couple more days, and I, I called the company, and I tracked it, and they, they said, oh, uh, you know, we show delivered, but we'll, we'll, we'll send a new one out. So a week later, it, it finally made it to him. Um, but but I, I asked the question, um, could there have been an upcharge of a better delivery option? Meaning, if I had known that for $10, that would have made it to him the date of his cancer treatment, for example, um, I might have been willing as a consumer to pay that because it was important to me. Um, and that, that level of importance, that, that, that little nuance of the consumer being able to make an additional purchase decision becomes extremely important. And what did you say that percentage was? 40, 46%? Sure. So 66% of the folks that we surveyed expect free, expect right. free shipping. Um, but 47% 47. of the, the folks that we surveyed said that they are willing to pay for a more premium shipping option. What do we mean by premium? Premium could be more expedited in terms of time. But it could mean more exped, um, more robust in terms of tracking. It could be an appointment home delivery. It could be uh, a more robust service with a more premium carrier service um, that they're willing to pay because of the importance that they, the consumer, are placing on that order. And that's yeah. the important thing is, are we allowing the consumer, forget about expedited shipping for a second, but are we allowing the consumer to dictate how important that is to them? And that's the important point there. Yeah, this is a, this is actually the golden nugget so far. The golden yeah. nugget. I'm, I'm surprised by that percentage, to be honest. That's why I asked you to repeat it because if, I, I mean, I think that's, I thought it'd be lower than that, to be honest, but that's, yeah. But it's also like, okay, so let me ask you this one. This is like, yeah. the, this is the really timely relevant uh, topic for the, the climate that we're in in 2020 because we're no longer going to do the sh promise ship by dates. If we're doing the premium shipping option, can we start guaranteeing some dates? I think so. Um, I think you, you, you can guarantee while still adding um, some, some, some slack to it, meaning it's the whole trust but verify uh, type of uh, mindset, meaning um, if, if the carrier has, even with the premium shipping method, a um, promise delivery date still add a good amount of slack onto that. Okay, so everyone, uh, if anyone's shipping arrives late, just Krish told you, Krish, Krish said it was going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can you but stick actually, with that? <laughs> well, you do have to check though, because actually something to say here is that you may pay for a premium shipping method. And that's why I stress premium shipping doesn't always mean expedited shipping. It could be more robust tracking, more robust other options because a lot of the carrier policies have suspended money back guarantee during this time. Okay. And, and I was completely kidding, obviously, if anyone don't, don't quote Chris on that, but, <laughs> um, but okay. So the, I, yeah, definitely. That's a good distinction right there. Cause I would have thought all premium shipping meant expedited. I would have, I would have assumed that being not the shipping expert you are. Um, you. But, but, but I, it's, I do think actually even within lower cost shipping. So for example, FedEx Ground has been known for years, UPS Ground, that's lower than, than shipping air, but they have appointment home delivery that's a mild upcharge, you know, two or three dollars. Um, maybe it's worth it if you're the retailer to invest in some of those or to have it available as an option um, to be able to do that and, and for an upcharge. I honestly think if, if you did that survey this holiday season, I think that 47% of people who would pay a premium would actually be a lot higher. Sure. 
Cause sure. I think everyone's like, I'm in a situation here where I just need this gift and maybe the malls are shut down by December, who knows? But I think like that is a really great value add. And, it, and like you were saying, eat some of the cost of it. Like if you can lower, like offer that premium and eat some of the cost, I, I think it could be very effective. And honestly, I'm not taking notes. I'm going to take notes later, but this is definitely something that's a big, huge takeaway for us. I think we were kind of wondering that about like those promised shipping deadlines. We're going to look into like the premium options. Hopefully it includes an expedited uh, option as well. But yeah, that could be a great, great value add to your customers. Like, hey, we looked into this for you. We look yeah. at all the options and here are your best options. And there's a little bit of a premium. And guess what? We're going to eat that cost too with you. I'd even, I'd even uh, mention that. I, I think uh, to put a finer point on it, uh, Scott, is, is the idea that especially um, where you guys are in Edmonton um, and, and obviously in Southern Canada, um, it's a very popular thing to um, buy products cross border. And uh, the challenge there is that you're adding another layer of potential customs delays, clearance, and things like that. So in addition to the idea that you have shipping delays and, and, and tracking and visibility challenges right now, just during this breakneck holiday time, once you add the layer of cross-border and customs clearance, you're adding another layer of complexity that could cause delays. So again, plan accordingly if you're both a retailer and a buying consumer. Okay, so far you're, you're really dropping some amazing uh, shipping value bombs right now. Um, let's, uh, let's, let's switch gears here a little bit because I know that Vaughn and I are just like selfishly getting you to tell us all our answers for the, the holiday campaigns that we're working on. But we, we, did, uh, we did get a question that, that came in. Um, it just mm -hmm. popped, popped in here. So why don't we read that? And this is from Michelle. And uh, we'll, we'll go through Michelle's question. Maybe it's going to open up some more questions. But anybody else who's listening right now, uh, th we're talking to Mr. Shipping Master out of New York City right now. He has all your shipping answers. Really awesome guy, as we've all learned. And uh, if so I don't know them, I make them up. So. <laughs> you, you sound like you know, either way. <laughs> but if you, if you have any question, questions, honestly, Chris, great resource right here. So please feel free to pop them into the, either the Q&A or in the chat. But our first question is from Michelle. And she's saying, I currently use Pirate Ship, but I was using the shipping method that Shopify provides. I'm noticing that some of my packages end up being underweight. Then I'm getting an email from Pirate Ship later to say that they are going to charge me more to deliver that package. I never had this problem with Shopify. And I weigh all my items, items to make sure everything is accurate. Do you know what is keep, why this keeps happening? And then, she, and then she followed up with, are your rates better than Pirate Ship? <laughs> so. Sure. I, uh, I, I think um, the, I, I can't speak to the rates that would be in Pirate Ship since that's a, another platform. But what I can say is that I'm... Um, you know, typically with carriers, we have preferred rates that are very aggressive. Um, here in the U.S., we have rates um, that are 20 to 30 percent lower than the retail USPS rate. Um, but more importantly, we do have uh, features that allow you to, to prepay uh, and purchase that label um, in advance so that you don't get a sticker shock of fees and surcharges um, after the fact. So a lot of our consumers really like that. Um, Michelle, I just uh, encourage you to start a trial and, uh, and give us a shot and uh, try, to see, uh, try to see if we can do better for you. I like that. I like the sound of that. Maybe you can use our uh, affiliate link too. <laughs> That'd be great. That'd be great. Even better. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, truthfully, I know, um, Michelle, just to add to what Chris is saying, of course, at Socialite, like, you know, everyone knows that there's a million different apps out there. Um, we, we trial a lot of different apps, and then we end up building amazing partnerships with the ones that have worked the best for us and that have saved our clients a lot of headache. So ShipStation is definitely a preferred uh, partner. And actually, Michelle asked me for the link. I like that. I'm going to pop it in right now. I'm just, okay. I'm, I'm just finding it. Yeah, I'll right. put it in in a second. Good stuff. Uh, so yeah, Michelle, thanks for asking that. And then, and, and then you did ask at the end there, Michelle also added, uh, lastly, do we buy the label up front with ShipStation the same way Pirate Ship does? Uh, you can. Uh, you can either bring in your own rates if you have with the carrier, or uh, as I mentioned, we have the, the prepay option, which I, which I like quite a bit because um, I know, uh, especially having come from working with uh, the carriers for years, 
there's always a fear factor of, am I going to get sticker shock after the fact? Um, so buying and prepaying for that label up front um, becomes just, just a lot easier. So uh, the answer to that question is yes. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I did just put that link in there for anybody, um, anyone else that's interested in giving ShipStation a try. There's the link. So, uh, so feel free. Like now, there's no better time than now. I mean, why not try it over the holidays when you're probably going to have your busiest time of the year? So you can really see if it works for you. Um, but Krish, I had a question about because you guys just released that the in cart updates. Wasn't that just recently released? Can you tell us a little bit more about what that is and how it works? Sure. So um, a lot of times shipping can be a very static process. That 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 is. Uh, um, for, for lack of a better term, almost crude, meaning you, you have shipping, here's a rate, um, but doesn't really allow you a lot of flexibility around planning it based on your business rules, based on what you want that shipping rate to look like in the cart. Maybe you're going to subsidize some of it. Um, so our in-cart delivery rates allow you to do that and to manipulate the shipping rate um, to a number and to a, uh, uh, to a business rule that you may may find more preferable um, based on your shipping. So as I've mentioned, sometimes you yourself may want to display a shipping rate of if it's under $50 or if it's over $50, you're charging them or you're not charging them, but if it's under $50, maybe you're charging them $5.99. Maybe your shipping costs in reality might be 10, but you're, you're accounting for some of that into your margin. So, so that's really our in-cart delivery options, that ability uh, to make shipping maybe a little less crude uh, and maybe a little more scientific based on your specific business rules and parameters of what you want uh, and the habits that you want there in generating the sale. A quick question for you about that one. So like, it, can you, can you, sorry, you, sorry, I, I, can you do tiered offers? Can you do tiered shipping prices based on cart value? Yeah, okay, you were just saying that. I just want to make sure because that's something that we've been exploring a lot. And it makes so much sense. It makes so much sense as the store owner where it's like, uh, am I going to eat the shipping costs on a $15 order? No, because then I'm actually going to be negative. Am I going to eat the shipping costs on a $200 order? Yeah, because I still have margin to play with. Mm -hmm. So that's a really smart way to like kind of lower the commitment as a, as a store owner. It's brilliant. Yeah, or some products um, may have a better margin than others. So again, being a little little less crude about it, more scientific. Um, I think that's the name of the game here. So, Is this like um, right on the checkout page that you provide those shipping, like the shipping rate would just show up right on the product page or the, sh the checkout page with the new, like with the shipping cost dependent on their cart value? Like where does that show up? Sure. Um, so in ShipStation, you're going to configure your carrier and service for each option and set the type of rate options you, you're, you're going to want to use, either like the preset rate or the live rate. Um, and ShipStation will then send that information to you know the store itself um, to choose in the card. So great example. Somebody may want to give three different options. You know, we mentioned before. Uh, the standard option, which is free, the expedited option, which is $5, and the fastest option, which is next day, that may be 10. Um, and that would be probably the best use case I can think of. But um, yeah, if you go into your store setup and settings, uh, account settings, and select your selling channels, um, then you have the ability to edit and then from there be able to select your delivery options and, that, and that's where you'd go to do it. Or I could always throw whatever I'm reading to you uh, into the chat because that works too, right? Yeah, it's like, you know, what we definitely are going to, yeah, we got the link here. Um, we have the Facebook group. We're streaming right now live in the Facebook group. There's a thousand members in there, merchants from all around the world. We oh, have other, other app partners, people from Shopify in there. It's a really, really great community. So Chris, right. we're definitely going to need to invite you in there after. And Please, we'll, please and, and we'll definitely like to uh, share like this article and some, maybe some other information there later too. Certainly, certainly. Yeah, because I, I think just going back to kind of how, how we started this when Scott was saying how shipping is you know a sexy topic, I think actually it's one of those ones where it shouldn't be an afterthought. Like it seems like just such like a, 
you know, I, I don't want to say, I don't want to say boring because I feel like that's, that's just taking away from how important it is. But it's one of those things that people don't think about. They think about their brand and their it's website, hard. like it's making hard. it look nice and like all these different things. But it's like shipping is so important because if, you know, it, it's the, that it goes to this whole holistic customer experience where if they don't get their things on time or they have no idea where their packages are or, you know, they, things get lost and they don't know what's going on, even down to like the unboxing experience of when they actually get it. I think sometimes what happens is merchants just forget about the process once it's out of the warehouse or it's out the door. And there's just like a whole other side of it that needs to be factored in as well, because it's it's this holistic experience. I think shipping is so crucial to that. I agree. And, uh, you you know, the the thing about shipping that a lot of retailers um, don't realize is that it really is uh, for for a lot of in a lot of ways the make or break on whether you're profitable or not. And a lot of times you don't realize if you're profitable because it's such an after the fact expense that you're not calculating it with your other costs in the same way. So your your per item and per skew costs um, really do get skewed um, by the idea that you're not properly factoring in shipping costs. And so. Things like our tools that help you determine the best rate and determine the best carrier for you. Um, these are really important because they really do determine in a lot of ways, especially with the internet making things so competitive for retailers on marketplaces and, and channel sales, um, that, that it's really important to watch watch shipping, not just your cost, cost per carrier, but to your point, packaging and other costs and, and other capabilities to really determine whether you're profitable or not. Yeah. And, and to add to that too, there's the profitability side for sure. And then also keeping customers coming back because if they have a good experience with your brand from beginning to end, so from when they hit order to when it shows up at their door, they're more likely to come back and shipping just plays such a, so such a crucial role into the are they going to come back and purchase from your brand at all? And that's, of course, if they like the actual product as well. That's important, too. But shipping is, I think, such a crucial component of that. Sure. And and we have, by the way, to the point of tools, um, the ability to do things like customized packing slips. Um, so that ability to not just on the return side, uh, not just on the tracking, but to your point about the unboxing experience, things like having a really professional looking um packing slip actually makes a very big brand difference if you're opening that up and you're not seeing a messy sheet of paper that may be ugly, may be ripped. Um, Seeing something that is professionally packed shows and having your brand really does make a difference. And we do have that tool uh, at no additional charge available on ShipStation. Awesome, Chris. Okay, we're getting we're getting close to wrapping up. We're not going to wrap up just yet, but we're getting close to, to to wrapping up. And if anybody here who's listening right now, we got uh, Chris. Pop your questions in. Obviously, he knows a lot and he can answer those. So if you want to get them in, now is the time. Um, but in the meantime, so I'm going to ask you a couple of things. Just what do you th- what do you think? Um, I know we've covered a lot of it, but can we just recap it into a nice little summary? Right. Maybe just like three little things to consider or to implement this Black Friday Cyber Monday. Sure. Um, for, I'd for say, shipping, of course. <laughs> I, I'd say the same. The first thing is, is um, you know, your shipping deadline was yesterday. That'd be our, our first takeaway. Um, I think our second is the fact that you really do have to add on um, a lot in terms of delivery, potential delivery delays, and communicate that well in advance in your order, in your your listing, um, in the checkout and post checkout. Um, in addition to that, um, can you offer, and it may have to be subsidized, but some sort of more robust shipping option other than the lowest cost free uh, that could be expedited in terms of time, that could be uh, appointment home delivery, that could be something uh, something else. Um, but th- those are the things I, I, I probably think are, are most important. Um, and, and we didn't talk a lot about returns other than saying, you know, we have a branded returns portal capability at no additional cost. Um, but the idea of returns is going to be really important. And, and the reason why I, I'm, I'm frankly a little scared is the idea that if we started ordering as soon as August, what is the reasonable returns window that a retailer should be expecting to get a return in? And 
can we reasonably expect that people are making the returns now? If they ordered as of August and September, are they making the returns in October and November? And does it theoretically go back into the same Christmas per holiday purchasing cycle? Or is January and February just going to be um, a horror when it comes to returns? And, and if so, uh, I think it could be both, by the way. And if that's the case, then we really have to plan to make returns as easy and seamless and least less painful as possible to the end consumer. So um, we're saying plan your shipping deadlines for the Christmas season already. But at the same time, we really, really need to be talking about returns as well. And if you ever invite me back on, I'm happy to talk about returns if you like. Oh yeah, I mean, like we, I think we still have a little bit of time right now. I, sure. I feel like, uh, <laughs> I, I feel like you're talking about something that's yeah we overlooked, and obviously that's what people who aren't entrenched in shipping every single day might do. Um, let's talk about returns, and maybe you can factor in another comment that you said earlier because you were saying no money back guarantees was that like before christmas that you wouldn't want to do that or like well i'm saying that the car shipping carriers themselves normally if you pay for a premium expedited one to two day service if it doesn't arrive typically there's a money back guarantee typically um however during periods like covid during uh, peak season um they may elect to suspend money back guarantees. So you have to know those policies and communicate that to your consumer um, about, uh, okay, you're paying for this, but you know there may not be a money back guarantee associated with it, or you yourself, if you're subsidizing the shipping and it doesn't come through as a retailer, uh, you may really be eating the cost of that. So, ah, so, okay, so that wasn't related to returns, but that was more like, just make sure you know what you're promising. Make sure. sure you know, know the fine print and tweak it as you see fit this season. All right, back to the returns. A uh, couple big things about returns this season that you want to share with us. Sure. Um, a lot of retailers, um, number one, actually create a slight bit of friction in returns because they don't want it back. And uh, I'd say in light of COVID, to err on the side of the no hassle, no quibble returns policies, that's one. Uh, we have tools like our self-service returns portal. Um, certainly, I, I encourage merchants listening to this call to, uh, uh, to take a look at. That's one. The second is, um, what are your real policies and timelines around returns? So if I mentioned earlier that the holiday buying season started as soon as August and September, then what is reasonable to say as far as your returns deadlines? Is it reasonable to say, oh, I have a 32 day return window, which is the typical average, um, or does that need to be a lot longer because, hey, I bought this for the holidays, but I bought it in September and now it's January. Is it reasonable for me as a consumer to expect to be able to return that? And that's something for you as a retailer that you have to make that policy really clear because the ordering cycle happens so far in advance. And by the time the person is actually getting and conveying and trying it on, that's going to be a factor. That's one. The second is in light of COVID, and this is especially for our friends who are in the apparel business, uh, obviously I'm, I'm sure quite a few of the people watching today are in the apparel business. Um, do you have any suspension of returns policies because of COVID? Several um, apparel retailers have. And that's a real problem because you, you have to communicate that well in advance. So if not only you have potentially a much longer returns window, but a potential ick factor around that return, the quality assurance pro uh, process, making sure that in light of COVID, it's, it's, it's okay for resale. Um, that's going to be a real challenge. So I think there's, there's a lot, uh, lot to be said here around um, making your returns policies um, as easy to understand as, as possible and making the returns process easy to initiate as possible. Hey, this is like, honestly, not, not only is it going to help you when it comes time to deal with all those returns that come in, 
it's going to help people commit to purchasing. When you, when you have this all figured out ahead of time, it lowers their risk of buying when, when you have all this information. We always talk about product pages. We want to include like guarantees, securities, uh, social proof, all these kind of things to build that trust. And having this whole thing, you know, everybody's going to be wondering it. Like, how does, how does the returns thing look in this cycle? If you want to get ahead of that curve and provide that information, you're only going to build more trust, credibility with that customer and increase the likelihood of them buying. Yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, yeah, I, I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't agree with that more. Um, I, I definitely think returns this year is going to be a, a very, very important topic. It always is, but especially this year because we just don't really know what it's going to what it's going to be. So, so do some research. It sounds like what, like you're saying do some research on on what the shipping times are going to be for returns. Do some research on what the shipping times are going to be to get the product. Do some research on the money back guarantees and and what you're actually promising, or make sure you tweak that fine print. Uh, mm -hmm. recapping your big takeaways. One of them was the shipping deadline was yesterday. Mm -hmm. uh, the second one was offer that premium option, hopefully with an expedited shipping option. And the third one is know your return policy, have that dialed in, understand the times and everything that your carrier is offering. Is that a good little recap there? Yeah, I, I, I think so. Absolutely. Um, you know, I think we could, we could probably talk for hours on, on what we could do to help merchants, but I think those are some of the most important. I think we should connect again. Uh, you, you made the offer. We're going to, we're going to seize that and we're, we'll schedule something in the new year. Maybe that's going to be a, a, like you said, you're scared. Now I'm a little scared. Maybe other people are scared. Maybe you can come alleviate some of some of our fears once this whole holiday rush has happened and we can revisit the conversation in the new year. Yeah. Because like I've talked to some merchants that have decided that they're going to just delay their refunds. Like they're going to make the refunds, you know, you can't return Christmas things until January. So I haven't really, I didn't really know what do I, what do I tell them? Is that a good idea? Is that a bad idea? Is that a scary thing? Like, I don't know. And I think you're the pro on that. We could do a whole thing just on returns because it is such a huge component of the, of the entire customer experience as well. And I, and I do happen to like Edmonton in, in July and August quite a bit. So, you know, just throwing that out. Oh yeah. Yeah. And we have we like <laughs> New York year round. <laughs> and we did have a nice summer this year it was actually yeah. quite quite nice so there you go we'll have to hopefully one day when this subsides we'll be able to do this in person again and talk refunds and shipping and all that other good stuff krish thank you so much uh everybody that's been tuning in thank you again for coming this is our black friday summer monday speaker series we're going to be doing this for another five weeks in a row uh, we're doing it at the noon lunch hour here in edmonton alberta so that's mountain standard time at noon um, Ivana, what's happening next week? Who do we got coming on next week? Uh, next week, we have Gabriel from Vessi Footwear joining us. So it'll be him. And we'll also be joined by Cassandra Ratcliffe from Shopify. So they're friends. Uh, we talked to them back in August. And now we're checking back in to see what they, how far they've come, what they've got planned. Yeah. And um, yeah. Yeah, if anyone knows Vessi, it's just that, uh, that little massive giant shoe company. So we're going to be talking to their director of marketing and talk about what they're doing on the front lines during Shopify, uh, sorry, during Black Friday, Cyber Monday with their Shopify store, with their ads, with their emails. So we're going to pick his brain on see what these like really massive company is doing. So that's going to be some like real time examples of what other merchants are doing, what they're doing well. And they're a real industry leader. If you don't know that company, uh, you might be living under a rock, but it's V-E-S-S-I Vessi. So check that out next week. Krish, again, thank you so much for coming out today. Uh, we appreciate it. Anytime. Good luck. Okay. And everybody, we'll see you Thank again you. next week. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ivana. Uh, enjoy your weekends, everybody. And let's keep working towards a good Black Friday, Cyber Monday this season. We'll see you really soon. Bye.